man. Good to see you. Very good. Hello, man. Hey, guy. Um, good to see you. Good to have you. Lovely. Always a pleasure to have your company, gentlemen. Well, of course. You too. Now, what about the spiritual world? Do you believe in that? Oh. <laughs> Not really. Oh, I do. Yeah. There's gin and vodka and brandy and rum. <laughs> What's he like? Do you, ever, do you ever sort of have a little bit of contact there, though, on a serious note? I don't really no. believe in it, but, you know, I wouldn't play like a with a Ouija board or anything, because that would frighten me. Mm. I don't believe in it at all. OK, they don't believe in it. We've got two gentlemen here today who are very much involved in it, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, might persuade them to change their minds. Let's find out more as you welcome spirit medium Derek Thank you. So tell us uh, what actually is a spirit medium then? Spirit medium is a person who is trained to uh, link in with the spirit realm mm -hmm. and communicate with spirit people mm -hmm. who have gone on from a physical life. Communicate and give off a message. An endearing message mm. to loved ones who they've had to leave behind. Uh, have you got to want to be in contact with those loved ones? It's not like you, are you just drawn to people normally who perhaps don't even want to go down that road? Uh, no, generally um, we follow a dis discipline of what we call opening and closure, and we don't just approach people willy nilly on the street. Hey, I'm seeing a spirit person with you. Yeah. Generally, we'll, it'll be organised, such as maybe a person will come for a one to one, mm. who are dearly wanting to see whether there is an afterlife. It's amazing, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? And lots more on this way. Come on, let's have a look in your bag. We can yes. talk about okay. it all day, couldn't yeah. we? Yeah. Thank you. And that's it. And later on, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to find out if there is a ready, steady cook spirit in the studio. Stay tuned. You oh, couldn't get one of the old famous chefs back for an hour or two. <laughs> 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 I'd like to try. <laughs> A bit of a scoffier, you mean, something yeah. like that. Yeah. All right, Caram tell us about what you brought along here, then. Well, I've brought an oriental flavour, Ainsley, mm -hmm. here. Uh, the duck breast, which I absolutely adore. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the lychees, yeah. which are gorgeous. The baby pineapple, and with, uh, without doubt, which I love, the coconut milk. Beautiful. The, Lots of lovely flavours there. The yeah, you've got the shallots, the chillies, yes. and rice noodles. The and rice, rice noodles, yes. How do you spend on that little lot? £9.52. £9.52, allowing to, um, up to £10, of course, so he's done a really good shop there. Do you, do you like that bag, then? That's a fantastic bag, oh. but there's an awful lot of cook to cook there in 20 minutes, mate. I'm yeah. sorry, Paul. <laughs> Especially if we're going to be interrupted by people walking up and down behind <laughs> us and stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all happening here today, isn't it? Hey? Oh dear. Hey, we've got another gentleman who is uh, equally in touch with the spirit world. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Colin Fry. <laughs> So, when did you realise that you were actually a medium then, Colin? Well, according to my family, I gave my first message when I was four years old. Four? Yeah. And who was that to? Was that I uh, told yeah. my grandfather that uh, his mother, my great-grandmother, had uh, passed away one Sunday tea time and, uh, of course, got told off for it. And then uh, the following day, because back in the sort of the, the early 60s, they didn't have a lot of telephones then, so he got a telegram which confirmed that his mother had indeed passed away at four o'clock the previous afternoon. Wow, wow. Yeah. Spooky, but uh, quite realistic. Well, quite real, I should think, um, because it's certainly real for you, isn't it? Anyway, we'll talk a lot more about okay. uh, all your kind of the, the way you're in contact with that spiritual world, but let's have a look at yeah, what you sure. brought along, Ross, first. Right, let's have a look at this. Mm. Plenty of kit, by the looks of And there you go. And uh, am I right in saying you did a little aura reading with Ro Ross earlier oh, you on? you did indeed, yes. OK, and we'll find out mm. a little bit more about that later on, too. Tell us first what you bought along. Oh, venison! Right, well, I bought along with venison because, mm. although I don't eat a lot of red meat, um, I, I do like venison because mm -hmm. uh, if I'm going to eat red meat, I like it cooked rare, and usually you cook venison rare. Mm -hmm. um, gorgonzola, because I like very, very strong flavoured cheese, so that suits my taste. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of brandy because I like that in or oh, out. Oh, I know. Food. And you've got some other potatoes, your beans, tomatoes, and the banana shallots. That's right. How much did you spend with the celery, too? £9.98. Oh, I think that's a good bit of shopping there. Shopper. Well done, yeah. yeah. You're happy with that, Ross? Yes, fantastic. Yeah. OK, let's go back over here and find out what uh, Derek's going to be getting from Paul. Uh, lovely bag. So, what we're going to do, we're going to do uh, roast spiced honey glazed duck breast. Oh, lovely, yeah. And mm. then we're going to do like uh, a sort of. It won't be Singapore noodles, but that type of thing, you know, because mm -hmm. you use rice noodles for that. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do um, roast pineapple with a coconut um, chantilly. And we're going to do a pineapple salsa and a few other things. Ooh, sounds good to yeah. you, yes? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. What about the duck? Okay. What's going to happen there, mate? 
Roast spiced duck. Just roast spiced duck. Oh, honey, mm, honey, lovely. balsamic vinegar. Mm, spice. Sounds delicious. And now, what about you, Ross? Fantastic. Well, this is quintessential sort of autumnal fare, isn't mm -hmm. it? So we're going to do um, venison with latkes and a red wine sauce and some mm -hmm. beans. The other venison we're going to make into a nichoise, because it says nichoise to me. Mm -hmm. We're going to make a celery gratin and a celery and cordon soda soup. Mm -hmm. And we'll play the rest by ear. Oh. Sound good? It's plenty of Sounds good to yeah, me. I love the way they say play the rest by ear. Already there are three or four dishes down the road. Well, can they achieve those three or four dishes in 20 minutes? We're about to find out, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I say. Ready, steady, cook. OK, up and away. Oh, nice spice duck. You can't beat a bit of spice duck. Not only that, the chef will show you how to trim it down, how to cook it, and how to get rid of some of that fat too. And uh, we've got to make a beautiful sort of chantilly and Whoa. coconut chantilly. Oh! Off goes one of the shallots and uh, retrieved. There we are, chef. In the um, with the pineapple, beautiful chantilly oh cooking down, man. the oriental spice noodles there, very much and along with some chilli and some bok choy too. Over there, over there, what about that gorgonzola and celery? That's a certainly a wonderful combination, and uh, Ross will be using that to its full effect, I think, along with the old venison to make a niswa salad, and he's also going to take the other bit of venison and sweat that off and cook that down into a really nice dish, including those lovely banana shallots. Lots of dishes on offer, ladies and gentlemen, over the course of the next 20 minutes. Don't go away. Let's uh, see what our chefs are going to come up with. OK. Um, OK, my man. What about this duck? Are we going to start off there? We're not quite going to start with the duck. What oh, we're going to okay. do is we're going to get the noodles blanched first. Uh -huh. Because Ouch. we need them quite dry to do the stir-fried mm. noodles. You, would all, you, mm. know, you wouldn't be really stir-frying with hot, wet noodles. They need to sort of sit and dry. OK. And these are extremely easy to cook. About four minutes in boiling water. Drain them, that's it. Okay, you don't even chef. have to boil them up again. Uh -huh. OK, I'm going to get my spices ready. OK. And what type of spices go particularly well? I'm going to use some thing? coriander seeds and black pepper, actually. Uh -huh. And that is going to give you those nice sort of citrus aromas coming from the coriander seeds and then the spice coming from the black pepper. OK, Chef, lovely. All right, then. And you just kind of grind... And is it important to use the pestle and mortar, do you think? Uh, yeah, I'll give that a bit of a shake. Nothing yeah, yeah. Hey, there we are. Let's get another one down. Still some from Rossi. I know things happen like that. I'm going to whack some salt in there. Does, does, does that ever happen when you in your restaurant or do they? It happens in my home kitchen a lot. You yeah. know. I oh, know. There you go. My girls, they love the black pepper, and then they never fill it back up again. Enough, chef. But I love you anyway, girls. There you go. I'll put a few more in here for you, so we yeah. can just separate those. Okay. So the salt's good in there too because it starts to break it all up. You know. Okay. Two minutes gone. Co yeah. Coriander can be quite sort of bitty, stick in your teeth kind of thing, if you don't get it ground up enough. Mm -hmm. But it's got that lovely sort Very of... Very aromatic, isn't it? Aromatic citrus aromas yeah. with the honey, the balsamic vinegar. Mm -hmm. It's going to be gorgeous, Ainsley, gorgeous. Now, well. tell us, Chef, how important it is to actually use fresh spices and how long you should actually keep them for. Well, I mean, it depends how they're stored and things like that, you mm -hmm. know? But I would be a big fan, you know, even if I'm just using pepper, always to have it done fresh easily because yes. the aroma it's all about the aroma and the intrigue and you kind of lose that I think when you buy prepared spices quite often mm. there's Don't some there's very some long, very good it? ones on the market they're sort of vacuum packed mm -hmm. and they're ground quite fresh but, but once uh, you open them but once you open them, you need to use them up pretty quick. Yeah, you know? they lose their Within potency. Within a month so. at the very most. Yeah, you know? good tip there, guys. Really. So all I'm doing is trimming off any excess little bits because it sort of can make it a little bit bitty in your teeth. Mm. Just slashing the duck breast carefully. And we're only slashing the fat, if you look what the chef... Yeah. Why are you doing that, then? So that we release the fat. It looks mm. beautiful as well, I think, as mm. it cooks. Nice and pretty. It lets the spices get in there. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll actually put the spice on both of these. OK. Because so it'll suit it. I'm going to do what, what we call a sort of ramen noodle soup as well. OK. So you've got a lovely noodle soup with the greens going in there, the chilli, the scallions, or the uh, shallots. But mm. um, the roast up then goes right on top of that. And it's Fantastic. Lovely. I look forward to seeing that. Thank Catch you very much, you for that, Mr. Rankin. OK, over here and the Red Tomato Kitchen. Let's see how Chef Ross Burden's getting on. Um, what are you doing for me today, Mr. Harris? I, I must know. Say, yes. that's lovely. Now, what about this? Uh, some shallots. We're going to put some garlic in there, oil, salt, and pepper. Put mm. some chicken stock in there. That's going to be our soup. Okay. I just melted the gorgonzola into the cream. That's for our gratin. 
we're just blanching the celery so it's going to be nice and cooked when it goes mm. under the under the grill. Yeah. Potatoes on for the uh, niçoise. Okay. And I'm just about to herb crust. I said Anna because I thought they looked a bit knobbly, but they're pink fur, aren't they? The old pink fur sort of Super pink, pink fur animals. animals. I know. So many different sort of styles of potatoes and stuff, but uh, all you've got to do is look at the packet really in the supermarket. Unless you go down to a green grocer and they're kind of all just sort of scattered around there quite loosely. The other one, the um, pink fur, and more you can see sort of slightly more the smoother skins, and the other one is slightly a bit more sort of bobbly, aren't they? Yeah, the it's, well, if you put them side to side, you can tell, but if you, if you don't, then it's quite hard to tell. Okay. So. You're and uh, let's uh, talk about some uh, venison here, Chef. Now, notice you haven't sort of uh, panicked to get it on yet. Is, uh, well, is I mean, it one of those really items quite that rare, cook, so. cook quite quickly, doesn't it? Yeah. Because it's They're really lean. And you want, because it's very lean, it's incredibly healthy for you, but because it's so lean, we don't want to, uh, to have it too, too well done. So. OK. OK, I'll just pop those Super. into this packaging Thank here you for you, much. Chef. There you go. And what's the best way, would you say, of uh, cooking venison? It's very popular in Europe, I know that, and there's four different types of deer. And people say, where does venison come from? It comes from deer. And it's incredibly healthy, but it's also got such wonderful, deep, rich flavours. Mm. That's and just to say, low in fat, guys, and that's uh, why it's so healthy for you. And I was talking about the, uh, you've got the Sika, you've got the red, um, you've got the fallow, and the fallow. Yeah, and well. Jack too, I forgot well. about that one, yep. actually. Good, good call, Ross. OK. And you're just sorting that off in just a little olive oil? Yeah, just a little olive oil. I must keep it really, really rare. OK. And nick some of the garlic, please. Thank you very much. Okay. That can go into that and a little in there. We're doing very well. OK. And just treat it, you know, it's so delicious. Just treat it simply. You don't need to do anything else. All right. Yeah. Are you a big fan of game then, uh, Colin? Um, well, I spend a lot of time out in Sweden, so, you know, it's, um, a, yeah, 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 and, you know, like deer. reindeer or moose or something Yeah, like moose, there. yeah, we have moose out there as well, and, of course, and I got why a taste... do you spend so much time there? What's um, the, well, I got a college out in Sweden, uh -huh. um, where, um, I train mediums, psychics and spiritual healers. Yeah, and what's the difference between the old sort of psychic and the sort of being a medium? All mediums are psychics, but not all psychics are mediums. And how do you acquire that then? What, is it a training or is it I something think, like you said you realised it when you yeah. were so young? I think you have to be born with the ability to be a medium. Yeah. And I, I, but I think what you learn over many years of development and dedication to it is that you learn to understand that ability and then use it as responsibly as you possibly can. Of course. Cool. And what about the, um, so out there in the spirit world, a lot of people said they're good spirits and bad spirits. Does, it, does that actually exist? I think just as in earthly life, you know, you, when you're working as a medium, you know, you encounter the good, the bad and the indifferent. And I think if you give too much credence to the negative spirits, what you're actually doing is you're empowering them. And I think, you know, that these, just as in life, these are people with issues and problems. And I think you have to approach them with the attitude that you're not going to let them intimidate you. Sure. But if they've got an issue to be dealt with as a medium, you'll try and help them deal with it. Wow, wow, wow. And it can pull you down too. It's like sometimes being associated with sort of negative people. You know when you're feeling a bit low yeah, yeah. and you yeah. surround yourself with negative people or you end up having a relationship with a negative person? Yeah. It just pulls yeah. you down. I, I, I think th th this is a lot of what you learn in training and development as a medium is that sure. you learn to, to guard yourself to protect yourself and not get drawn down by these great, things. Great, great. And okay. uh, talking about sort of protecting yourself here. Um, what about Ross here? Because you did a bit of an aura meeting. So I did indeed. Tell us briefly, uh, what did you discover about Ross? Well, um, as we were looking at the aura, one of the things that I, I picked up at was, because uh, I did an aura reading with him, was, and I said that there was a lot of uh, colour of communication around him, and I felt that he was going to be uh, writing a book, but not absolutely completely associated with what he normally does. Yeah. Um, and what we established was that he's, Which actually, was true. Yeah, he's in true? the process of writing a book about pubs, I think you said, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You write a book about pubs? Yeah, mm. social history of the pub. Oh, wow. That's interesting, isn't it? OK, we'll talk again, okay, we'll talk great. again, and I'm sure a lot more is okay. going to be revealed. Let's get back briefly oh, to tell you really. a little bit about the uh, venison here. Notice our chef. It hasn't cooked it for too long, you know? I don't know, what we, is that kind of well, a rare? Yeah, is that that's rare, but the other one's thicker, so... And um, here's a little trick yeah. for people at home. You're cooking steak. Yeah. You put your finger, index finger and thumb okay, together. Yeah. Feel that bit. Yeah. Okay, that's rare. Mm -hmm. As the muscle contracts as it cooks, go to medium. Yeah. Medium well. Yeah. And stuff. well done. <laughs> and well done. But if you stuff. just try that at home, you'll feel that the tension's there. Yeah. And we just prod it. And that's that's just a bottom Okay. There. So Ross is doing that, but you can actually do it that way too. That's it. Rare, medium, medium well, well done, guys. Just a way of touching your meat before you actually prod it on your barbie or indeed in your pan. But do be careful if you're going to touch it in your pan with all that hot heat. I'll let you get on with it, Ross. Let's Thank go back much. down to the green uh, green pepper kitchen, see how chef's getting on down here. Now, ranking, what's happening down here then? 
We're just cruising over here, I think you know. You are cruising. A lot of stuff is going in. You've actually roasting some pineapple. What have you done with it? Have you sort of tossed it in a little bit of sugar or something like that? I, I've stuck some cloves in it, Ainsley. Okay. Um, and I actually forgot to put the vanilla in, so it's gl I'm glad you reminded me of that. With okay. the other half of the pineapple, we're going to make a little salsa. And let's have a quick look here, guys. There we are. Look at that, and that really is coming along, bubbling away there. Keep the and oven open there. A little bit of sugar and what else in there, Chef? Um, butter. <laughs> Lemon juice, in goes the vanilla. Mmm, OK, we've halfway the, now, guys. We've got the duck in there. Yeah. Some grand on the duck. We've got the Beautiful. noodles cooked already. And we've got a little bit of salsa kicking the in here, too. The noodles are drained, yeah. All right, then, fantastic. Oh. Now, what about you? I've been talking to Colin down there. What about yes. you, Derek? When did you realise that you were a medium? Is that quite a young age, too? I was, Ainsley, yes. Uh, my first spiritual experience was when I was six in my grandmother's home. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd just come home from school mm -hmm. with my elder brother and sister. Yeah. And we were playing upstairs in the, in the attic of the old Victorian house. And we got called down for tea. Ooh. When we got to the last landing, mm. there was a man standing in the doorway, walked over towards me. Yeah. He appeared to be gigantic to me. I was only oh. six. And he spoke to me, ruffled my hair, and then told me to go down and tell Gran that Richard was there. I raced down. Oh, I was scared. Are you sure about this? Though? Absolutely, yeah. Paul. It happened. You and weren't drinking or nothing? At six. <laughs> You're from Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I know. But, but, I know. but you also... <laughs> oh, stop it, you lot. <laughs> You've also got a spirit guide, haven't you? Is that Absolutely. someone that you, you go to when you want to find out about what's happening with other people? No, he's, uh, our spirit guides are always around us. Mm -hmm. And where mediumship is concerned, they're a little bit closer to us because we're doing this way. Mm. But you've got one like everyone else has got a, uh, sure. a spirit Guide, but I go back. I've known Sam in a previous time, and he's always around there to help me with my spiritual work. Amazing. Now, tell us, we mentioned to our audience earlier on whether there might be a spirit in the Ready Steady Cook studio. Do you feel any vibes here? Well, all? actually, I did a little bit mm. earlier. I was aware of a, a man who stood about five foot seven, five foot eight, uh, quite a, um, uh, a cubic sort of shape of a man. Mm. That's what's up. <laughs> Ronald <laughs> Thompson, shut up, he's not quite well. <laughs> Take AWT. And, yeah. and um, I was aware that this man actually suffered either a heart seizure or a couple of heart seizures. I know that he, or I felt as if he'd actually worked in this area for a, a fixed period of time. Mm -hmm. Maybe he had this heart condition. And I can't say that he actually passed away mm -hmm. from here, mm -hmm. but he gave me his name and he said William Bell. William Bill. Yeah, William is Bill. Look at them, they didn't even think about it now, are they? <laughs> they're just so, so, so concentrating on what they're doing. Anyway, okay. talk about that. Yeah, you get on with those. Thank we'll you. talk again. I'm scared okay. to make a joke of it in case it comes after me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm saying to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, is it yes. a good spirit or bad spirit? A very good spirit. A very good spirit. Good. Okay. okay. Is it, it okay to take it yeah, in okay. a light hearted manner if you're a skeptic, or is that like taboo? Should I not be doing that? No, no it's yeah. okay. And, but yeah. you know, you're talking about a, a, a gentleman here. Here who's, you sell out big theatres, don't you? People come all the time, constantly in contact with the other side, Absolutely, and people yes. come forward and talk to their loved ones. And so, yes. I think it, it's, it's almost like I liken it, ladies and gentlemen, to kind of a bit like religion. You know, when you do you believe in God or a certain God, or don't you believe in it? And some of us just sit on the fence. We don't quite know. And the spiritual mm -hmm. world's a little bit like that, isn't exactly it? Exactly. Well, we got yeah. enough mm. lime zest there to Is feed uh, the whole spirit mm. world, there, man. Mm. Um, Lovely. What I'm doing, I'm just coming. making the, the wee salsa up here. Yeah. OK, tell us about um, this salsa. Can you try and squeeze me some lime juice as well, please? Yes, yes of course. Of course. And, and you want a lime uh, squeezer too there, Paul? Well, I mean, depends. Hey. I don't know, just just cut it in half and okay. uh, that's it. Come down here. Here you go. Bring it down here. Yes. That's it, my man. There we are. Here you go. Grab hold of that. Just what squeeze about it straight you? in here. No, no, no. Uh, Not in there. No, a different one. Sorry. A one, a one in there. I'll take okay. one of those. Yeah, OK. Yeah. And where do you want the other one, Chef? Um, well, he should know already. He will read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking no, the mic, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to no, take the mic. Sorry, I'm just teasing. I'm just get, in, get the bad spirits um, on. Just it. put it in a wee bowl. We're going to we're going to be making a, uh, a lime syrup. I've got the sugar, the water, and the lime zest in here. We need some lime for that, and that'll go into the light cheese. Okay, okay. Sugar, and then we'll need a little lime. bit for the sort of the coconut chantilly. Sort okay, of. six minutes, gentlemen. Time is of the essence. OK, I'm going to let the chef get on with it here. We've got lots of things baking off in the oven, and it's all going to come together very, very quickly. Let's see what Ross is getting up to over here. But surprisingly, we're, we're very, very happy, actually. We've okay. got our latkes of browning. They're, they're um, traditionally cooked in goose fat. Yeah. Nice, so, nice sort of Polish-Jewish thing. OK, um, that's just the potato cooked down with... They're fat roasty. Mm-hmm. 
effectively. You have to cook them slower because they're, obviously the heat, heat has to go through more thickness. Mm -hmm. So I've just put a little corn flour in there to bring them together because onions are very waxy. Uh, pink furs are very waxy. Okay. Okay. Got our potatoes cooking for the, for the uh, nishwa salad. We've got the makings of the nishwa salad. I'm just about to start chopping some herbs and dressing it. Okay. We've got our, sa our soup is cooking. I'll blend that in a minute. We've got the red wine mm. sauce reducing. It's almost done. Yeah. It's and got I all this lovely food. But is food important to the spiritual world then, Colin? I think when people first pass over, because they've had a lifetime of sort of experiencing food, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just like many things from the Earth Love, we carry those over with us. I think the, the, the process of eating, and of course we socialise when we eat as well, mm. I think they carry on the process of assimilating yeah. eating until they become accustomed to the fact that their spirit body doesn't need that sort of sustenance. Sure, we've got Paul there who's kind of joking around a little bit. What do you say to the sceptics of this world? As little as possible. As little as possible. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Yeah, get stuffed, we fill up theatres, mate. We I, don't need you anyway. As I say when I do my shows, there's one letter difference between sceptic and septic, and they're usually both poisonous. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, harsh words, I say. <laughs> OK, what about this reduction here, That's, Chef? What's going on here? That was the pan we cooked the venison in. Yeah. Please. Uh, a little bit of garlic and, and, and onion. Deglaze with the brandy, so there's loads of brandy in there. Red okay. wine, just pull it down, all those flavours are, are going to sort of come together. Okay, great. I saw the flames going up. Tell people how they can do that, and but at the same time being in control, because it all looks very flash for our chefs. I wouldn't do it at home, frankly, okay. because people often have um, extractor hoods and stuff, and you can set that with light. Okay. So it's better to add a little rather than a lot. But okay. here we can be a little more flamboyant. But you can do it in a little saucepan and control that heat. Yeah, that, that, that yeah absolutely. Rate, but can't little, you? little by little. But you want to boil the alcohol off because alcohol is delicious to drink, but it's very bad to eat. It has a very raw flavour, so we don't like it. Okay, that. good point there. Okay, that's why your flambe it's not necessarily to be flash guys it's because you're burning off all that alcohol so remember that all right fantastic things are moving on what about a job or do you just go um, have another glass of wine no 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 if you'd like to sort of make sure they're nice and cool so you don't hurt yourself just cut them into sort of half centimeter rounds for me please. right oh, okay mate that'd be all oh, you all right there so yeah, a bit no bitter problem. There we are. He's just sort of slicing away. Do you do much cooking then yourself? As much as I can. I started training as a chef when I first left school, but mm -hmm. um, at 15 and a half, I was a little bit too sensitive to yeah. a big burly chef shouting at me all the time, so I gave it in for... A, enough of that. Yeah, for enough an 18-year re career in retail management before I went professional. Oh, good for you. Mm. So you, you familiarise yourself with it. And what about out in Sweden, then? Is there still a lot of, uh, lot of fish involved in the cuisine? Yeah, yeah. Herrings and stuff yeah, like herring, that? Yeah, herring's very, very popular out yeah. there. Um, also Three minutes, gentlemen, three. We've got a very strange dish, which is mm. rather like a potato dumpling, which is yeah. called pulse, which I rather like, but it's an acquired taste. Oh, I like that too. I've done that. My agent's got a Swedish connection. He's always out there doing stuff, loves the stuff. All right, now, these are really cooking down, and uh, you say it's very popular in the Jewish world, these, yeah? Yeah. OK, nice salt beef sandwich down there in New York with a couple of those. And, and they normally serve with a, with a wonderful radish, uh, sorry, horseradish and, and beetroot mm -hmm. um, um, relish called crane. OK, crane, all right. And what are you going to do with this, <laughs> Chef? About two and a half minutes okay, to go. I'm just going to reheat that and to serve it with a sauce and a little bit of some, and some beans. We've just got a soup going there. Uh, are you going to hit that with here. a touch of cream or not? I don't... Well, what do you think? The cream... I think the cream sort of complements it. It kind of... You know what I mean? It just kind of finishes it off, but that's totally left up to you. Don't let me persuade you. Nishwa salad's happening. Sure, OK, we've got another type of uh, salad here. This is that hot, the noodles, oh, everything oh, oh, oh. sort of being tossed through. Do you want a little bit more soy in there, Chef, or are you happy yeah, with that? Yeah, a little bit of soy. Soy's right here somewhere, Ainsley. I don't know where. OK, a couple of minutes to go now, gentlemen. There you go. You the plates out. Don't whip it anymore. That's grand. That's okay. fantastic. And Bring the what plates do you want to do up. with it? Plates, plates. Okay. Yeah. What are you whipping up there, Dale? Um, it's just some... cream and coconut milk. Yeah. Okay. Cream and here's coconut your, milk. all your yes. plates, my man. You can get on with that. Okay. Fantastic. Now, can you spread looking some good. of those out for me, please, mate. Mm, there we are. All right. All of that's coming together. What mm. else do you want there, chef? I want the pre the plates spread out a little bit. Please. Okay. Yeah. Come around here. Just get these. Yeah. That's it. Spread open those plates. We've got about one and a half minutes to go. So, do you like playing to big theatres, then, Derek? I absolutely love it, Ainsley. Yeah. I, um, the atmosphere and um, also the expectancy. Sure. For the people, it, it's just a, there's no feeling like it. Yeah? yeah. And can you actually bring the spirit world? Is it, do they travel anywhere, anywhere that you go? You feel that energy and that force? Absolutely. They come from the spirit realms. Yeah. I always liken it to this light and hard. Mm. They come spiritual express. Yeah. They come into the atmosphere. They want to. It's a happy atmosphere. They're more inclined to go into it. They feel Absolutely. comfortable. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. yeah buzz, buzz. A lovely buzz. Sorry, lovely chef. talking to you guys. OK, audience, I don't need to tell you, there's uh, less than a minute to go. This is where our chefs really start flying now. They have to get the food out on time. 
thinking about presentation. What's it going to look Coriander. like on the plane? The How am I going to win over the audience there? Coriander. Coriander, here we are. That's it. Ba -ba -ba. Spin that around. There's the coriander. Nice. Grab all of that. Give that to the chef. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. What is it? Red or white just to wine? On the top of the, of the red wine G one. Red or white wine? Red wine. Red wine. Here we are, chef. One lovely bit of red wine there. Okay. Thirty seconds to go. Audience, you're voting for what the chef did with the ingredients they were given. Start thinking about that. Will our chef get this out on time? All sorts of wonderful things so happening there. Lots of events. And over the other side, we've got delicious duck that's been peppered down with a red wine sauce. Audience, let's count oh. them down. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop! Yeah. You got your pineapple? OK, to remind you of what our chef started off with, Paul Rankin had in his bag a couple of duck breasts, some rice noodles, coconut milk, pak choy, light cheese, baby pineapples, chalot and chilies. Whilst Ross Burton started off with venison, pink fur apple potatoes, gorgonzola cheese, celery, fine green beans, a miniature bottle of brandy, vine tomatoes and banana shallots. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I wonder if they know what this food tastes like, eh? Oh, about to find out. Hey, you got any ideas? You can smell it, can't you? I can smell it. It's, yeah. It smells gorgeous. Go on, pick up your cutlery, have Thank a bit you. of a go. And uh, I've got to say, any of you Liverpool FC supporters out there, Bill Shankly, period, this guy used to play for you. I don't know if you remember Whoa. him. There we are. What about a name? This is gorgeous. Britain's Roast Haunted Kitchen. Thank <laughs> 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 you. Wow. <laughs> Peter, my man. You you go go what did you do with it all? We mm. started out with the duck, you know, we, we basically started the duck the same way. Mm. Uh, made up a spice mix with oh, the so coriander, black there. pepper and uh, salt. Yeah. Um, then we went into a dry pan, roast them off. We took one out and then we glazed the other one with honey, soy sauce, balsamic Oops. vinegar yeah. to create this lovely glaze. This is served with mm. a simple pineapple salsa, just mm. a chopped pineapple, a little bit of shallot pine. Um, chili, mm -hmm. a little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of chives, Gorgeous. simple stir fry behind that. Um, this is the vegetable stock, in goes the noodles, a little bit of soy sauce, sesame oil, little, the, the raw shallots, chili, mm. and the roast duck across the top and finish with a little bit of coriander. Wow. Noodles, simple stir fry, start, start mm. to get them catching on the edge, a little bit of curry powder going in there, soy sauce, in goes the duck, the shallots, the uh, the coriander and the chilies again. Mm -hmm. This one here is really nice because we kept it whole and we studded it with cloves. Yeah. Cooked it in a caramelized sugar, lemon juice, Go and on, van just cut into it vanilla anyway, syrup. And yeah. we've served that with a coconut chantilly. And mm. I like this too because the, the basil leaves are, were a mistake. Derek got me basil leaves instead of coriander. <laughs> but it'll go lovely with that lime syrup and the fresh light cheese in the lime syrup. Pineapple's beautiful. Yeah, what about oh. everything here? All the duck dishes and everything? This is superb. I love duck, but I've never ever, yes, Hold on here. had duck it taste so well. really nice. <laughs> Twenty quid is that all, mate? Oh, You're yeah. joking. <laughs> it's <a> beautiful. <laughs> well done, well done, well done. He's paying him off already, isn't he? <laughs> What's he like, Colin? I don't know. Your turn, mate. You've got lots of lovely things to try. That venison just looks so inviting. So well, pick up your cup and get stuck first. in. What about a name, I please, can't Ross? Think of the with all the moths that have just come out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. uh, what about a name, Ross? Uh, venison brand. Uh, the steaks are rare, but the spirits are present. Ah, <laughs> very nice. I thank you indeed. What did you do with your venison and all the other ingredients, Chef? Well, we, we herb crusted one of them, mm. that, um, cooked them, and then cooked them both rare. Then one was served with the green beans, a red wine reduction sauce, and some latkes. Mm -hmm. The other goes onto a Nishwa salad. So it's the potatoes, the beans, um, uh, it's parsley, tomatoes, red wine, garlic, shallots, all that sort of stuff. Then we took the celery, we blanched part of it, we made a cream and, and gorgonzola sauce and gratin it. You can see it's put just tender, but beautifully sort of browned on the top. Mm -hmm. With the rest, we made a, a leek and gorgonzola soup. Beautiful. Well, he's Looks perfect, perfectly there, painted. Colin. Absolutely brilliant. I know, absolutely beautiful. And is it important to rest it just like any other meat? Completely. Of course so it keeps, is. All, keeps all the juice in. Yeah. yeah. Just rest your meat and it makes it lovely and tender. It doesn't matter what cut or quality that you get. Now, what do you think then, Carl? It's really, really good. I mean, I love, I love venison anyway, but, you know, unfortunately, a lot of places, you know, venison is just like completely overcooked, rather like with beef. You know, people say it's crucified. This is perfect. Wonderful. Okay, mm. our men from the spiritual world say it's absolutely perfect here in the Ready Steady Cook studio. It's hardly surprising the food's lovely, but what about our studio audience? Is it going to be a green pepper day or a red tomato one? Let's find out. Will you all please vote now? 
And up they go, and look at this. You can see that today it's a green pepper day! Well done, there you go. Congratulations, Eric. Thank you. £100 pounds spending money there for you. Yes, thank you. And what are you going to do with that, then? I would like to donate this to um, the uh, kiddies hospital called Alder Hay in Liverpool, because they need money and to help for new hospices and things like that. That's very nice. Thanks, 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 Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank, Thank you. Hey. Thank you, too. Great. All oh, right, hey, then. Uh, condolences, my man. Go in them all. I know, but you also <laughs> go home with a lovely ready steady cook hamper. Thank you very much. Loads of lovely goodies in there, and you Thank say you. Uh, you enjoy doing a bit of cooking in Sweden. I don't do you? indeed, yes. And you cook outside in the nude like they do out there? Well, that's a bit of a myth, actually. It's a bit of a it's myth. It's too cold out there. It is. I thought it'd be very, very cold, but there we are. <laughs> lovely. Thank you so Thank much you, for coming Anthony. along. Thank really you. mean that, and absolute pleasure. As Couldn't always, to a better man. Oh, there you oh, go. I love, I love well, you, Ros. He's got an opportunity to get his revenge, ladies and gentlemen. It's quickie bag. Time. In the meantime, I say a very big thank you to Derek Akora and Colin Fry. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, let's see what you can do with Ooh, this little. Well, lot. stop there. Mr. Okay, Harris. look at that. We've got sultanas. We've got pecan nuts. We've got cooking apples. The only place you can get them is in England, by the way. We've got some uh, nice Devon custard there, some brioche bread, and a bottle of rum. We're back in the spirit world, aren't we? Oh, I think we are. <laughs> <laughs> brioche buns. I can feel it coming through. They like it. I know. They like it. OK, so first it's over to Ross. What are you going to do with this little lot? Uh, 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 well, obviously, the, the central thing to this is the brioche. So, um... Uh, uh, Sponge and custard trifle, make an apple-y trifle. Mm -hmm. um, an apple and pecan caramelised crumble, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And perhaps a little bit of rum and apple fool. A rum and apple fool. With a little hint of sultanas or something like that. Who knows? Mm. OK, nice choice there. Let's What's see what like? uh, Paul's going to come up with. Um, I would do some eggy bread with uh, caramelised apples. I would do some apples with rum and raisin custard. A bread and butter pudding too. I would do a bread and butter pudding as well. Mm. You read my mind. Mm. But Ross's sounds much better to me. Yours sounds oh. delicious. <laughs> we always get this from our chefs, don't we? But it's not down to them, it's not down to me, it's down to our studio audience. What's it going to be, guys? Green peppers or red tomatoes? Will you all please vote now? And up they go. Oh, look at this. This is a, this is quite a result, isn't it? It's eh? Red tomato. Yeah, red tomato. You'd like it to be red tomato. Definitely red tomato. Oh, Mr. Rankin, grab hold of that. <laughs> there you go. No, no, it's hold for on. you. Yeah, you I'm sorry. Shop, it's a ranking bag. Let's get cooking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your ten minutes cooking time chef starts. Now, let's okay, do it. Okay, Ains, um, okay. I need you to get uh, some Ooh. egg yolks and we'll okay. boil some cream. What do you want me to do? Um, that full thing that you were going to do sounded good. Because you're doing that, what okay. do you need for that? And perhaps well, I'll do some drop scones as well. So just a bit of apple, a bit of custard, and we're laughing. OK, let's yep. get a slightly larger saucepan, shall we? OK. OK, for that cream. All right. And what are you doing, Paul? I'm going to watch you boys cook. You're going to watch me cook? I'm going to watch you guys cook, absolutely. Oh, there you yeah. go, my man. So, Cut Rossi needs a bit of apple. Here. Is that enough, Ross? You need a bit more. You miserable soul. Oh. You think you're a Nick Nan? I know, Thank a very Scotsman, much. a Scotsman. All right. OK, so, touch um, more cream So, these are Bramley there. apples. Uh -huh. So, they're absolutely wonderful for making apple sauce because their flavour is just second to none. They're wonderfully sour, aren't they? Very for... tart and sour. Um, they make good juice as well, really refreshing. They make great apple pies. I'm sure they make great juice. And although they're sour, if you, if you pick them later on, um, they ripen up and they become quite sweet. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I caught the professor out there, you see that? Yeah. Ross is a bit stumped there. Ross, and normally he's not lost for words at all, Absolutely is he? Absolutely not lost for words at all. I know when I'm, I know when I'm beat. <laughs> it's obviously age over experience, you know. You know oh, you're a cheeky one, Ross Burden. You're Please. a cheeky one. <laughs> All right, then. Now, we're flying ahead. Now, what about that custard? You want a bit of custard, don't you, Ross? Yeah, please. Just about, you know, 100 mils or something other. Not too much. OK. Now, the, the, the apples that I'm going to caramelise to go on top of the eggy bread, I want those to look nice. Yeah. OK, so I've left the skin on because the tendency is for them to break up a little bit, the bramleys, OK? Mm-hmm. So we're going to... 
And I'm going to make, what I'm going to do is make the caramel in the pan with a little bit of butter. A sort okay, of buttery two... vanilla caramel. All right, two minutes gone already, Chef. And uh, I'm going to need an eggy bread mixture as well. Thanks, sir. And lovely. So, lemon and what about uh, custard, Paul? Do you like the old tin varieties? It's something You that's know, a... when you're a student, there was nothing like, you know, tins of rice pudding, tins of custard, all that sort of stuff. Mm. But I'm not a student anymore. And I still like it. Yeah. Well, that's it. What about a nice fresh custard then? Your egg yolk sugar? Uh, it's hard to beat, here. you know. It's the sort of stuff you could drink almost, isn't it? You know? Yeah. OK, now I'm going to need... OK, egg yolks combined with a little bit of sugar, ladies and gentlemen, which we're going to then pour the cream on top and then return it to the pan. That's going to be for our lovely... Uh... Do we have a bit of vanilla or not? Vanilla? I can get vanilla in there for you. Oh, Absolutely. Hmm. OK. And oh. what a, half, a, well, half a pot enough, chef? And um, not uh, just a little bit of essence. Yes. Okay, yeah. a little essence in a little there. bit of essence. Okay, yeah. so eggy bread. You know, you can make eggy bread with milk and an egg. Uh huh. But I like to make it a little bit richer, so it's almost like uh, like a creme brulee mix type of thing, almost. Yeah. Mhm. Mm so I'm going to make mine with a little bit of cream and an egg yolk. You can give that a little whisk for me. I certainly will. We're going to need to get the bread and butter pud pudding on. OK, then. Bit of so butter, too, and sugar. You've so got, I'm, I'm going to need that custard you're working with. And what do, you, what do you want with that? So I'll be frying my eggy bread in there, Ains. OK, and what else? Uh, so your bread and butter pudding, where do you want that settled in there? I'm going to put it in here. OK. Now, one of the tricks with bread and butter pudding is don't overdo your bread, ladies and gentlemen, because that just takes over. Sure. Now, okay. do you like brioche for the bread and butter pudding? Brioche, is it... brioche is wonderful because it's an enriched bread. It's got eggs in it. It's got milk in it. So it's got that lovely natural richness, which makes a great bread and butter mm. pudding. It's a lovely mm. kind of brunch bread. It's got a little bit of luxury. Oh, what about a bit of the old stale bread if you're going to make bread and butter pudding? Anything yeah, at all? Oh, no, that's wonderful. It is wonderful. But... I do prefer the old uh, brioche. OK, I'm returning this to the heat, Chef. You've got your vanilla in there too. Let's just reduce that heat a touch. Well, what we're going to do then is just pour it directly onto the, um, the bread here. OK. Lovely. What else can I do, Chef? That's pecan. Do you want that in that sugar, isn't it? Um, that's, for, that's for the pecans. We're just going to let that... Now, ideally... Right. When you make bread and butter pudding, you just want to let it sit a little while. Okay, okay. apples in here. Yeah, yeah. All right. so, oh, we'll put some raisins in here. Yeah, sultanas. We'll some raisins, a bit of rum in the custard They're too. They're sultanas because yeah. sultanas are actually <laughs> sweeter than raisins, guys. Remember that. Rum. So it's like a rum and raisin bread and butter. So just let it just let it sit mm. and caramelise things. Okay. Okay. Now, if you can whisk that up, and we'll get the eggy bread in there. Okay, halfway now, guys. That's OK. Now, I'm going to need to cling film this. OK, and I've got a quickie question. Perhaps you can answer this, please, Ross. This is from Anne Tiley via an email. Thank you for uh, emailing us, Anne. And she says, I bought a tin of pistachio-flavoured halva a few weeks ago and would love to know how to use this product. I'm sure that it would taste absolutely delicious straight from the tin, but there must be something else I can do with it. Oh, halva. What a luxury product halva is. Yeah. Halva. Halva is made from... Uh, so sweet meat. Uh, yeah, but it's made from sesame seeds. seeds, yeah. And the pistachio is just a flavour. Delicious stuff, actually. Um, I wouldn't cook with it. It's just one of those products that's sort of perfect as it is, Ainsley, really. you do the microwave. OK, Chef. There's the bread in there. Yeah. So um, the I, sesame seeds are incredibly good for you. They're very, very full of zinc. Um, ah! Which is why they're, they're, I mean, they make delicious things like, you know, the tahina that we all love. I need that chopped up. And it makes great oil, both the toasted for Chinese and the, and the plain for Arabic cooking. Great stuff. I remember mm -hmm. when I was in, in Iran um, 100 years ago. You were in Iran? I was in Iran 100 years ago, and we used to eat pistachios like they're going out of fashion. They were fantastic. Huge, huge jobs. You can get fresh ones here as well. Okay, and they come in their sort of little encasements. You have to crack them open to get to them up. What else do you need, Chef? I need the apple chopped up quickly. The apple chopped up quickly. Move. OK, okay I'm moving. Move. If you move out the way, I'll move. I OK, to, sorry about that, I want Rossi. to see the hips moving too. OK, my man. Don't encourage him. Now, what do you want with it, diced apple? Um, yeah, we need to be getting that cooked up for the, for the apple custard sort of thing. Oh, my. Right. Yeah. OK. So in there. Now, we'll put, right. We'll, we'll put a bit of water in. That's what my mum used to do. Just a little bit she, of water. What did your mum used to do? Put a bit of water in there? Oh, hi. You forget how good the simple things were. Simple like, things in life. Like apples and custard, you know? OK. If, now, if you take out those almonds, those, uh, pistach those no, uh, pecans... No, here, here's your pan there. Oh, yeah. you've got a pan there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, let's get those. Three minutes to go. Here we are. Here we go. Oh, goodness. 
Go on, chef. That's it. Fantastic. Okay. Out the now, now. Where, where is the custard? Uh, custard is. Okay. There was a we're going to warm that up. Uh huh. Let's get a saucepan on there. And we're just going to loosen it slightly, either with a bit of milk. Yeah. Okay. Bit of milk. And you don't want to bring it up to the boil, ladies and gentlemen. Just bring it up so that it's nice and warm. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Let's get it over here then. Okay. Ross, tell us about your lovely fool. <laughs> There's plenty of it about, mate. Um, We've got the we've got the uh, drop scones cooking away there. Yeah. We've got the full is I've just whipped some cream. We're gonna we're gonna toss that with. It's almost ready to turn over. Uh, we're gonna toss those with. Oh, a bit um, of there too, maybe. Okay. Uh, some some cream, some custard. Whoops, a little bit of the cooked apple, a little bit. Whoa! Of Whoa look at that. Yeah. Flambe, folks. Okay, lovely. Okay, let's tidy up. The yes, list. carry on, chef. Um, pikelets, we used to call them pikelets, it's a very Scottish word, I think. Uh -huh. um, so I've got custard apple, which has been sweet, and a little sweetened cream, just fold that together, make it nice and delicious. It's not healthy, but it's jolly nice. Microwaving. OK. And I have to say, that sounds yum, 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 yum. But uh, we've also got this uh, ready here. Torch. Yeah, you carry on with the blowtorch, Chef. Oh, you put this on a bit clingy, didn't you? Uh, just look over there, everyone. <laughs> no, it's fine. Absolutely fine. Little touch yeah. of cream on there. That's it. Do you want to touch more cream yeah, around? Yeah, touch of cream on there, Ainsley. Mm -hmm. You do. You need to watch when you're cooking custard in a microwave, folks, because if you, if you cook it too fast, the egg yolks are just going to curdle slightly. Okay. Okay. Right. So we're going to we're going to caramelise that. Mm -hmm. Get the plates up, Ainsley. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, plates are coming up now. Let's get this food out of the way. All right, now the heat, you can use a gun. If you haven't got a gun, ladies and gentlemen, all you have to do is simply pop that under your grill. Make sure the grill is hot first, obviously. OK, 45 seconds. Let's get this out of the way now. OK. Crickest bread and butter pudding I think we've ever seen on here. What are the apples going in, Chef? These apples are going on top of the lovely eggy bread. OK, then, let's get the, the eggy bread there. That's OK, we're going to have that cascading on the top. There you go. Mm. There we are, lovely. OK, I'm going to pour that right in there. What's that next? This is your apples and custard. Apples and custard in the pudding. And we've got almonds on top, pecans. Caramelised pecans, just chop them slightly. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop cooking! That's it, finish up there, Paul. Time's up, my man. Oh, now, what about... Rossi, bring those over. Yeah, oh, come sure, on, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. And what about a name to finish all of these off? Well, you know what, Ainsley? I'm disgusted. Stop picking up my nuts. <laughs> not a lot you can say to that. <laughs> not a lot you can say to that. There is not a lot you can say. Tell us what you did then, Mr Rankin. We started out with making the custard for the bread and butter pudding, mm -hmm. and that was your, your egg yolks, your sugar, your vanilla, mm -hmm. boil the cream, on it goes. Ideally, let your bread soak. Mm -hmm. We added a little bit, bit of rum and sultanas in there. And then ideally, you'd put that into a water bath, cook it very slowly until it's just trembling, then let it uh, come out and cool. We've hurried it up by popping it in the microwave. Sweet like mm -hmm. wine. Mm -hmm. Caramelize the top of that. We diluted the, uh, the, the bot custard with a little bit of milk. In went the apples mm. uh, into that, and we've topped that. The apples we got on a little bit late. I don't know why that happened, Ainsley. I don't know. You asked me to chop it up much, much uh, too late. Uh, and, ladies uh, and no, gentlemen, if you've missed any of these recipes, fear not, because there is CFAX. It's there for you. And, indeed, you can check out our website. That's bbc.co.uk forward slash food. Go onto the Ready, Steady, Cook website. All sorts of information, even about how you can cook with the chefs on, on the programme. Hope to see you soon. Say goodbye, guys. Goodbye, guys. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> that's really yummy. Yeah.